I welcome you to the worship of St. John's United Church. For the first time, this is not only being seen on, on video through YouTube, but some of you may be listening right now on the radio on CKOL 93.7 FM here in Campbellford. We are so glad that we're able to reach out in this way to people that don't have the internet, don't have other means to, to worship, uh, have a little part of the church back in their lives. So we hope and trust that this will be beneficial for you in your faith, that it will help you to grow in faith and love. These services will be almost identical. There's a few changes we've had to make and a few things I need to add for the radio version so that you're not seeing something without hearing something, of course. So I do welcome you again. May God bless you at this time. And the Lord be with all of you. Peace be with you. The Call to Worship my eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. If you would like to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever, Amen. Psalm chapter 19 How clearly the sky reveals God's glory. How plainly it shows what he has done. Each day announces it to the following day. Each night repeats it to the next. No speech or words are used. No sound is heard. Yet their message goes out to all the world and is heard to the ends of the earth. God made a home in the sky for the sun. It comes out in the morning like a happy bridegroom, like an athlete eager to run a race. It starts at one end of the sky and goes across to the other. Nothing can hide from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect. It gives new strength. The commands of the Lord are trustworthy, giving wisdom to those who lack it. The laws of the Lord are right, and those who obey them are happy. The commands of the Lord are just and give understanding to the mind. Reverence for the Lord is good. It will continue forever. The judgments of the Lord are just. They are always fair. They are more desirable than the finest gold. 
They are sweeter than the purest honey. They give knowledge to me, your servant. I am rewarded for obeying them. None of us can see our own errors. Deliver me, Lord, from hidden faults. Keep me safe also from willful sins. Don't let them rule over me. Then I shall be perfect and free from the evil of sin. May my words and my thoughts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my refuge and my Redeemer. The Holy Gospel of John, chapter 2, and verses 13 to 22. It was almost time for the Passover festival, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. There in the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. So he made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered those who sold the pigeons, Take them out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that the scripture says, My devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities came back at him with a question. What miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Jesus answered, Tear down this temple and in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? They asked him. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from death, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
There's a story I've always liked told of a minister who was going to a church for the first time in his ministry. He had been called to this church and he decided what to preach on for the first Sunday and they were amazed. He, he preached on loving one another. And it was one of the best sermons the people of this congregation had ever heard. They were so thrilled. They thought, what a wonderful preacher we've got. The elders uh, of the church were, were thrilled. Till the next week, the following week, he preached another great sermon, but it was exactly the same sermon. They were kind of wondering, well, you know, maybe he didn't have enough time to prepare something else. So they said, well, let's give it a week. We won't say anything just yet. We'll give it another week. And then the third Sunday, once again, he preached exactly the same sermon, talking about loving one another and how Christians we need to love one another. Well, the elders had had enough of that, so they went together to speak to the minister and say, you know, they wanted to be a little positive. They said, you, you give a wonderful sermon. You're a great preacher. But we have this thing. Why do you keep preaching on the same thing every week? And without missing a beat, the minister looked at them and said, well, as soon as you start practicing this one, I'll go on to the next point. Well, of course, that's meant humorously, but it's also there's some truth in that. We, we continually hear messages from ministers, myself as one, and we hear these messages, but do we listen to what's being said? Do we try to put these things that are said into our lives and practice them day to day? I have to admit, as a minister, I find it hard to preach at times. It's, it's something I actually like to do most of the time, but sometimes you just don't know what to say any longer. I mean... I know I'm repeating myself at times. I've been doing long on this. I know it because I can hear it myself. And I don't remember every sermon I've ever given, but I remember enough. Even the story I told at the first about the preacher is one I've used before. And so, you know, how do you keep fresh or should you keep fresh? What do you do to be, to be different? How do you continue to give the word for the people? Because the truth is, we're all learning. I'm growing in my faith. I hope you are growing in your faith. And this all comes to the passage of scripture we had from the Psalms this morning, the very end of it. It's a, a, one of the more famous Psalms, Psalm 19. But at the very end, it says, May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Some ministers begin every sermon with that passage because it's such an important one and seems to speak so much to what we hopefully are trying to do as ministers of the gospel. We are trying to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. But as I say, it's not always an easy thing to know what to say or whether you're just repeating yourself too much. But maybe sometimes it's important to repeat ourselves. Maybe like that, which is a joke, but maybe sometimes people need to hear again, be reminded. I know that some of the, the preachers I love to listen to, others that I, spiritual writers I like to read, they repeat themselves quite often. And I don't find that a bad thing. I actually find it a good thing because it's maybe something I need to learn a little bit more in my life. Well, my role as a pastor and as a preacher is to help you. And it's to remember, well, let's talk about these, these videos or those listening on the radio. This is your first time. I'm learning how to do all these things, how to record my voice well, hopefully to do it in a good way, to make it sound reasonable. But maybe, I know at first, I look at some of my old ones and I go, I think I've improved. But what's the point of improving? I'm glad I'm improving. I want to improve. I want to make it better. I want to do these things, but what is the point of doing this? What is the reason for doing it? Is it so I can look good? Well, hopefully I don't look bad. But is it about me looking good? Is it about me getting praise? Sometimes, because we're just human like everyone else, ministers can fall for that, I can fall for that, and we're more concerned about what other people think of us. But really, that what not what our message should ever be about. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, what? Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation, what I think about, 
be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. So when I'm preaching, hopefully, and I do fail at this, but hopefully I am trying to understand what God would speak to you. And it is amazing because that's one thing I did learn as I've preached is, is how often people hear something completely different than what I thought I was saying. Now, some of it may be because we're not always good at listening, and it can sometimes be the listener's fault. Sometimes it's because maybe I didn't express it well. Sometimes I think it's because it's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit takes the words that the preacher gives and uses them to serve the purpose, the best purpose for the person listening. So if sometimes you talk to some of your friends and you're talking about a sermon, you say, well, I didn't hear that, I heard this. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe that's God's spirit speaking to you personally through the message. And so when I give these sermons, and sometimes I think they're better than others, uh, hopefully most of the time they're pretty good, but I can never be sure myself. I'm not the best judge of myself. But I do hope that I'm always trying to find what God would speak to the people listening, to the people watching. Whether that's in person, which we're not doing at the moment, whether that's on a videotape or whether that's through the radio, I hope that you hear God's words through this message. What is God speaking to you in this time, during these events, the good and the bad that's happening around us? Because it's not all bad. It's not a good situation, but it's not all bad. We shouldn't think that. Look at the things that even here at the church we've been able to do that hopefully we continue to do even once we're back able to meet in person. I think it would be wonderful we continue the radio ministry. Even though it's only started, I think it's going to be a good thing and good for those who are listening, those who may not be able to make it out to church even after we open up, for shut-ins, for others, to hear the word of God, to hear the hymns sung, And to remind themselves of God's love for themselves and for the others around them. This is what a minister, a preacher, whatever term you want to use, this is what we're here for. Is to help you, to help others to perceive God's love in Christ for you. To realize that your life is important. To realize that God wants to be there with you. With you to help others, with you to love others, with you sometimes because of your circumstances just to be loved. Maybe there is nothing else being asked of you. One of my favorite books when I was young was called uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Because I like that book so much, I went to the library one time and, and got a book by, the, and I can't even remember the author's name at the moment, but I went and tried to find a book by the same author, and I found one, and I was skimming through it in the library to see whether I would take it out. And so I was reading like the first sitting down, and I was going to read the first chapter. I didn't like his other work, so I didn't get the book, but I did like one part of the book, and it was just at the very beginning. And it was someone who was asking what God wanted in their life. And he went to this place, and I don't know whether it was a guru or something like that, some sort of spiritual director, and asking, you know, what should I be doing? Am I fulfilling my life? And this is what was said in the book and really st- stuck with me, obviously, because I was in my teens, I believe, at this time. And what stuck with me was that they said, what if God told you that all God wanted at this moment was for you just to know him, just to rest and to know him? There wasn't anything you needed to do at this moment. In a world where we're so much about work and a work ethic, and that's not all bad, don't get me wrong. There is a good in that as well. But sometimes we get so caught up in that, we forget also about the rest. The Sabbath. That's what the Sabbath is, is a day of rest. God wants us to rest. The Sabbath. Man was not made for the Sabbath in order to obey some rules about it. The Sabbath was made for man. 
That is what Jesus Christ himself says to those who are questioning him about what his disciples were doing on the Sabbath. And he says, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath, the rest, was made for you. Because that's what you should hear in this as well. Rest is made for you. God knows you need rest. God has made you this way and so has provided that for you. All of these things that we can learn, may you have learned this day, may you go forth and be at rest and be at peace with your family, with the people around you, in your community. The Lord be with you. Today we will celebrate Holy Communion. If you need a moment, just pause this Find yourself some bread and some grape juice, and perhaps you can partake as we remember our Lord's death. And we do begin by offering a confession of sin for ourselves. We confess to you, God, that we have sinned in what we have thought, said, and done. We confess that we have sinned also in what we have not thought, or said, or done. Before all your people, we confess this to you. We confess it openly to one another. These, our faults, have hurt us and hurt others. We cannot stand them any longer. Help us. Rid us of our guilt. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke that bread, shared it with his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. After the meal was over, he took a cup. He shared that with his disciples and said, take this, drink. This is my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Thanks be to God for the gifts of God. For the bread we have eaten, for the wine we have tasted, for the life we have received, we thank you, God. Grant that what we have done and have been given here, may so put its mark upon us that it may remain always in our hearts. Grant that we may become mature Christians, that ours may be the faith which issues in action through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the closing prayer. God of the living, through baptism we pass from the shadow of death to the light of the resurrection. Remain with us and give us hope that, rejoicing in the gift of the Spirit, who gives life to our mortal flesh, we may be clothed with the garment of immortality, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I ask that all of you who hear this receive the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.